So howdy folks, I have another treat for you today. I, I know how you love new products. This is a Dobbins ultralight rod. I don't know how many bass uh, angler subscribers I have, but I know Dobbins is very popular with bass anglers. And they decided to release a trout and panfish version of their Sierra series rods. So this is still a Sierra rod, Sierra series rod, but panfish and trout version. And then my exact model is seven foot four, seven foot four. That's a long rod, still one piece. Two to six pound line, that's fine. One thirty second to three sixteen ounce lure, that's actually correct. Also, ultralight power, that's not true. Fast action, that's not true either. This rod has a solid tip and I'm not a fan of solid tips. I heard about this rod actually, even though, yeah, I heard when it was released. There's another YouTuber who I watched, uh, who I watched, uh, Hobi One Kenobi. He reviewed the same rod, but in the casting model, the BFS version. They release kind of the same blank, I think the same blank, but with just casting guides. What I saw was the action was extra fast. And indeed, if I catch a fish, I'll show you that the action of this rod is extra fast. I have to show you without a fish. I thought I'd catch some fish here. Look at this tip here. Huh? This is not a fast action rod. That's an extra fast action rod. And when you have a solid tip rod, they are almost always extra fast action. It's very difficult. I don't know, it's not difficult. It shouldn't be difficult, but it just never happens. It's always the same thing. You have a solid tip which flexes super easy, but the problem is it's it's only the first foot of the rod. Okay, foot and a half. I don't know if it's two feet. I don't think it's two feet, the solid tip. And then the rest of the rod, I mean, look how thick this blank is. It's almost one centimeter in diameter. That's a thick blank, man. So even if this blank is super thin and flexy, just because this tube is so thick, it's not going to flex enough. And indeed, this blank after the first foot and a half, the rest of it is like a medium power bass, act, bass rod. It has a good amount of carbon. I can, I can tell it has very fast recovery rate. When you whip it, it recovers right away. And it's pretty sensitive, pretty dry. I mean, it's a good blank per se, but they decided to use for the first, whatever, six feet of the rod, they decided to use a bass blank, like a typical bass angler. For them, this kind of blank is ultra light. So yeah, they always, the tip is much softer than the blank and you have practically two rods stitched together. We have an ultra wide tip that's very flexy in the first foot and a half of the rod. And then you have finally a fish, look at the tip. And then you have a medium power blank. That's, that's how it always is. Wow. One little boogie after how many minutes of yapping. Otherwise, and this is not defective parts, it's not low quality parts. Like I said, I, I like the blank. The blank seems reasonably high quality of, of car, uh, amount of carbon and it's very light. Probably the best feature of this rod is how light it is. And not only it's super light, but the balance is absolutely amazing. I was checking the balance without the real I mean, this rod, I don't know how heavy this butt section here is, but this rod feels like my major craft. It's, it's really well balanced. So for people from the bank, 
that need the extra distance or you have a little bit of weeds in front of you and you just need a longer rod you can fish this all day it's very light and because it's balanced so well it's just not heavy and very easy to fish the only problem is the damn blank is so stiff so you would be fishing only with the tip uh oh uh oh I'll get out of there okay let's see if we can catch something with straight braid not that we killed them before with uh, fluorocarbon either mm. so what was I saying the rod has good components it's just bad decisions were made when they were selecting them they just select too stiff too stiff of a blank for ultralight rod that doesn't match the tip the other thing is this handle here is just wrong uh, it's the exact same handle as in uh, the ACC crappy sticks I believe this might be even a Fuji handle but I don't care Fuji Shmuji if it's wrong it's wrong the problem is again the thickest part is over here and in front of you is thinner so when you properly grab the real seat and this is the proper hold of the real seat now the thick part is behind me and my hand is kind of slipping forward and I'm kind of hanging on to the uh, to the actual stem of the reel here the only way for this real seat to be comfortable is to have three fingers behind the stem and one finger in front but now look how look where the line roller is how can I grab the line now and if you grab the line now you have to pull the line all the way down see your index finger needs to be the same see now it's proper it needs to be the same level with the line roller so I'm sure there is some stupid explanation for why this real seat is designed like this because Fuji doesn't design things for no reason I just don't care for the reason it's very uncomfortable unless you hold the the rod incorrectly oh look at that straight braid oh lost him but action is action what else the rod actually has really nice guides these are not Fuji guides I forgot the name but I'm gonna write the name on the screen somewhere but these guides first of all are really stiff another fish man and I'm doing better with straight braid that's why I like not high vis colors because in a pinch you don't need a leader you can fish with straight braid and look at this I'm doing better definitely doing better with straight braid what was I saying I forgot yeah these guides very stiff and very light how do I know they're light look how many of them you have five guides just on the solid tip if these are heavy guides you're gonna feel tip heavy but this rod like I said feels like a major craft rod it, it's incredibly well balanced and this is not possible uh, with cheap guides so also I this is my favorite design if you look at these guides this design is my favorite it's just not too far from the blank I mean it's very sexy and the ring inside is super super thin now these are like I said it's not titanium it's steel but because everything is so thin including the ring the, the ring is I don't know what kind of ceramic it's not torzite it's I think they make their own ceramics or something like that but anyway these are excellent guides and like I said for the rod also the blank if it was really ultralight blank I like the blank the real seat should have been different but these guys did not spare money this is why it's kind of sad because it's not like some companies they they buy cheap components and they jack up the price 
and they try to tell you some mumbo jumbo that doesn't exist. I actually like the components here. I just don't like the choice. They could have gotten the same blank, but thinner. Um, yeah, man, that's it. However, I don't want to kind of bash the rod. You, you, you got my point. I'm not really criticizing it. Like I said, this rod is $170, but with a different blank and different handle, I would say this rod is worth the $170, especially since there is nothing in that price range. We have lots of rods under $100, and then there is nothing between $100 and $300. There's nothing. From $100 to JDM, there is nothing, this huge range. And because it's so light and so well balanced, and I know some, I fish from both, I don't care for 7 foot 4, but some people fish from bank, they, they do need longer rod. If Dobbins ever makes another version of this rod with a proper ultralight blank, I would recommend it at $170. With these guys, just a different real seat, I would recommend it. So I actually tried to jig a little bit uh, first because I wanted to try the sensitivity. Man, this rod is sensitive, especially if you fish with braid. It's a, it's a very responsive blank and, and pretty sensitive. If you get the shorter, the shorter models, six foot, um, sensitivity is good. I'm not going to compare it always. Is it better than this? Is it better than that? Sensitivity is good. If you never owned JDM rods, you're going to think very highly of the sensitivity of this blank. All right, one last fish. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, man. Maybe a little basic. God damn it. Anyway, I'm not gonna cast again. Oh, look at the hook keeper. I've never had a rod with the hook keeper here. This is another bass thing. I know bass anglers so like to put. I got used to it. It doesn't bother me. I have no problems with that. But yeah. Thanks for watching this one. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.